Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This talk is about Kelly versus Markowitz portfolio optimization. It was shown in a previous talk that Markowitz portfolios do not minimize risk, even if given the true probability distribution of asset returns. In this talk, we will show that Kelly portfolios maximize the average long-term returns if given the true return distribution, but Kelly portfolios have other problems. The portfolio rate of return is a weighted sum of asset rates of return. We write it like this. The weights must sum to one, and if we have long-only portfolios, then the weights must be non-negative, and if we also allow short selling, then the weights can be negative. In Markowitz portfolio optimization, we wish to maximize the mean portfolio rate of return, and we wish to minimize the variance of the portfolio rate of return. Again, see the previous talk for details. Just to give a quick example that variance is not a good measure of investment risk, consider two assets A and B. Asset A has possible returns minus 4, minus 5, or minus 6%. Asset B has possible returns 5, 10, or 15%. And the minimum variance portfolio has an asset A weight of 5 divided by 6, so the minimum variance portfolio mostly contains asset A, and the rest is in asset B. The mean return for that portfolio is minus 2.5%, and the standard deviation is zero, so all returns on that portfolio are two, minus 2.5%. However, if we had just made a complete investment in asset B, we would get 5%, 10%, or 15%. So clearly, an investment in asset B is superior to the minimum variance portfolio. We can consider two variations of the previous example. In the first variation, let asset A have possible returns 3, 2, or 1%. And in this case, the minimum variance portfolio has the same weights as before, but now the all outcomes of the portfolio is 3.3%. In the other variation, we have slightly overlapping returns, because now asset A can have 6%, 5%, or 4%, so they are slightly overlapping here with asset B, which may have 5%, 10%, or 15%. The asset weights are the same, however, and the portfolio now has a mean 5.8%, and the standard deviation is still zero, so all outcomes of the minimum variance portfolio is 5.8%. In both these cases, a complete investment in asset B would be better. So clearly, Markowitz optimization does not do what we want it to do. Now consider Kelly portfolio optimization. The so-called Kelly criterion is defined as a mean logarithm of the growth of the portfolio. So we just plug in the portfolio rate of return and we get this formula down here. The objective is to find the asset weight or weights, if we have more than one, that maximize this mathematical expression here. This can be done with numerical optimization or in some cases, analytically. Consider the first example from before where asset A has returns minus four, minus five, or minus 6%, and asset B has returns 5%, 10%, or 15%. We want to find the weights for asset A and asset B that maximize the Kelly cr criterion or Kelly value. So we just plug in all the numbers and I use this notation here to indicate a stochastic variable with different outcomes. We can plot the Kelly value for different asset weights. So on this axis here, we have the weight for asset A going from zero to one and the weight for asset B is one minus the weight for asset A. What we want to find the asset weights that maximize the Kelly value. And in this case, it's clearly all the way to the left here, where asset A weight is zero, so asset B weight is one. For the other examples, the one where the asset A could have a return of three, two, or one percent, we get the same. And for the last example, where asset A can have returns six, five, or four percent, we also get the same. So in all these three examples, we have an optimal or a Kelly optimal portfolio when the weight for asset A is zero and the weight for asset B is one. Now consider a slightly more interesting example. Let's say that asset A has possible returns 12, 9 or 9% 9 
and asset B has returns 5, 10 or 15%. In both cases, the mean return is 10%. If we plot the Kelly value just as before, we get this curve. And the objective is to find the maximum, and that's approximately here. And the weights that give that maximum Kelly value is 0.756 for asset A and 0.244 for asset B. So the Kelly optimal portfolio would consist of about 76% of asset A and about 24% of asset B. If we calculate the weighted returns using these weights, so we just use asset A weight with these returns over here and the asset B weight with these returns and we calculate the sum, then the Kelly portfolio has possible returns 10.3%, 9.2% or 10.5%. Now consider simulations of the Kelly portfolio versus investments in either asset A or asset B. This may be a bit hard to see, but this line down here is solid and this one here is dashed or dotted and the solid line is the cumulative return on the Kelly portfolio divided by the cumulative return on asset A. It is about one in both these simulations and that means that an investment in the Kelly portfolio or in asset A would give approximately the same result in these two simulations. Now consider the dashed lines, this one here and this one here, which is a, an investment in the Kelly portfolio divided by the cumulative return on an investment in only asset B. And in the first case, we have a sort of a jagged, but sort of exponential increase, which means that an, the investment in the Kelly portfolio would become exponentially better than an investment in asset B. In the other example, we have a, a rapid increase first, but then a decrease and then an increase again. again. Consider two more simulations. So in the first, we have the Kelly portfolio divided by asset A, the solid line here. And at first, the Kelly portfolio performs better and then it performs worse than the investment in asset A. The dashed line is the Kelly portfolio divided by asset B. At first, the Kelly portfolio performs a lot worse than an investment in just asset B. And then eventually, it sort of makes it back again. The last simulation occurs only rarely, and it is very erratic, uh, and it's hard to say which is better. Mostly, we get something like this, or like this, and sometimes this happens, and rarely only this happens. The conclusion for Markowitz portfolios is that they do not maximize return and minimize risk, as commonly believed, even when given the true probability distribution of returns. But Markowitz portfolios are diversified, which may give an illusion of safety. On the other hand, Kelly portfolio optimization does what it is supposed to. It favors assets with better return distributions. However, Kelly portfolios may underperform in the short run, but they will have the best performance on average in the long run. Kelly portfolios are also concentrated in few assets or maybe only one asset. So if the return distributions are incorrect, then Kelly may severely overweigh the wrong assets. Diversification of Kelly portfolios can be enforced by limiting the asset weights. This lecture is based on a paper called Portfolio Optimization and Monte Carlo Simulation. And you can also find source code for the R language and simple Kelly examples for Microsoft Excel. And they're all found on this website and the links are also provided below the video.